JBN, we keep you informed. Shop patron shot dead during struggle with armed robbers in Trelawney. A shop patron was shot and killed and another injured during a struggle with armed robbers posing as customers in Trelawney on Friday night. The deceased has been identified as 33-year-old Leighton Henry of Bontio, Trelawney. According to a report from the Constable Communications Unit, CCU, at about 9.30 p.m., Henry was among a group of persons at a shop in his community when two men walked in and ordered an item. As they were about to be served, the men reportedly brandished handguns and proceeded to rob the proprietor and the patrons, during which a struggle developed between them and Henry. During the struggle, the gunmen opened fire hitting Henry and another man before fleeing the scene. The two injured men were taken to the hospital, where Henry was pronounced dead. The Trelawney police are investigating the incident. Two men shot dead in separate incidents in St. Anne and St. Thomas. The police are probing the shooting deaths of two men, including a senior citizen, in separate incidents in St. Thomas and St. Anne on Thursday night. The deceased have been identified as 70-year-old Nathaniel Brown of Hampton Court, St. Thomas, and 52-year-old Nigel Marsh of Great Pond in Ochoa, St. Anne. In the first incident, Brown was riding home on a bicycle at about 8 p.m. when he was sponsored upon by gunmen who shot him. He later succumbed to his injuries. Three hours later, Marsh's bullet-riddled body was found on Back Street in Great Pond by law enforcers. Reports are that about 11 p.m., residents of the community heard loud explosions and called them. On the arrival, Marsh was seen with gunshot wounds to the face and the right hand. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. No motive has yet been established in relation to either killing. Motorcyclist crashes out in birth Savannah St. Elizabeth. 31-year-old Rowan Graham, otherwise called Bull, a mason, of Burn Savannah St. Elizabeth died as a result of injuries he sustained in a motor vehicle collision in his community on Sunday, February 23. Reports from the Lakovia police are that about 1.30 a.m. Graham was driving his high-rev motorcycle along the roadway when he was said to have overtaken a line of traffic and ended up colliding with a Nissan motor car that was traveling in the opposite direction. The police were summoned and on the arrival both drivers were taken to the hospital where Graham was pronounced dead. Investigations continue into the incident. Woman charged for stabbing common law husband in the face. A team of officers assigned to the Kingston Central Police Division arrested and charged a woman with wounding with intent on Friday, February 21. She is 38 year old Yannick Jackson of Brayton, Portmore, St. Catherine. According to the police, about 10.30 a.m. on Monday, January 13. Jackson, who had a common law relationship with the complainant, had a dispute at the Pernal Charles Harkett in downtown Kingston when she used the knife to stab the complainant in his face. The police were alerted, an investigation launched, and Jackson was arrested and charged. Our court date has not been finalized. Man charged for murdering 54-year-old woman a man is scheduled to appear before the court to answer to the charges of murder, shooting with intent, and illegal possession of a gun and ammunition following the shooting death of 54-year-old Donna Brathwaite in her community of Regent Street, Kingston 14, on Sunday, February 16. Charged is 25-year-old Jerome Malcolm of Tulip Lane in the parish. According to the police, about 7.30 p.m., Brathwaite, was walking along the roadway with a male companion when a man approached them and opened gunfire at them. The police were summoned and they were taken to the hospital where Brathwaite was pronounced dead. An investigation was launched and Malcolm was subsequently charged on Thursday, February 20. A court date will be announced at a later date. Guns and ammo found between mattresses in Kingston. Members of a police military operation seized two guns and several rounds of ammunition on Gordon Avenue in Kingston 13 on Saturday, February 22. Police reports are that about 3.15 p.m. during the search of a house, two 9mm pistols, two magazines, and 25 9mm rounds of ammunition were found between two mattresses. 
no one was arrested in relation to the seizure. Zozo and SOE wrecking home life of young cops. The promise of higher wages and greater respect has gone sour for some district constables turned policemen who since graduation in 2017 have been deployed as part of special security measures in western Jamaica, miles away from their children and the family in Kingston. According to some of the new recruits, after graduation they were assigned to police divisions close to home in the corporate area, St. Catherine and St. Thomas. Shortly after, however, they were summoned to be part of the deployment of joint security forces to St. James and later on other parishes in the western end of the island following the declaration of a state of emergency in those areas by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Initially, that tour of duty was supposed to be for two weeks, they said. However, it is now going on two years and they are becoming restless as they are forced to maintain spousal intimacy and raise their children over their cell phones. This is taking a toll upon my woman and pitting them. You think it is if you try to raise a pit in them over the phone? Bemoaned one policeman, noting that he's on the brink of losing his family because of his extended absence from home. It is just pure insecurities popping up with my relationship. My woman constantly in an argument with me, trust me, it really stressing me out. The father of three is youngest, still toddlers, and the eldest rebellious teenage boy continued. Sometimes I literally have to counsel myself not to react or to do certain things. Because if I should answer her or be a son how I really feel, I may go home and it's me alone at the house. Sometimes my son feels that his way is the way to go. It is very hard to raise him over the phone. Things that he would do when I was there, they are not being done anymore. The cop said that sometimes he has regrets. Giving up being a district constable, which he was for six years before transitioning to a policeman. They said that it would be better for my children, but I don't know that it meant that I would not be around them. He said almost to tears. I am getting more money, but it is like I am making less now. He said that he, has, he now has to hide or lie to his youngest children as they cry and throw a tantrum whenever he leaves home to resume duty. Child and adolescent psychiatrist Dr. Genis Shetty noted the psychological impact such situations can have on children and their parents who are working in high crime, high stress environments. You are sent in the front line and you are trying to help persons who may not support you. Coupled with that is the society we live in, where admitting to emotional problems as soldiers and police is taboo. You are seen as soft, so they hide some of these challenges, Shetty said. Sometimes their family life and family love are lost too. We really have to be mindful of their mental health. District constables have long bemoaned a lack of respect from other members of the constabulary who belittle their level of training, education, and overall competence. Despite carrying out much of the same duties, district constables are often denied benefits, such as housing and uniform allowances, which are offered to members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. A district constable reportedly earns roughly 68000 monthly in gross salary. That income doubles, plus added benefits with the upgraded constabulary status. Hence, many district constables have opted to better themselves by becoming members of the force. That move, however, is among the worst one female constable said she made in her adult life. Sometimes I regret it. Honestly, most times I regret it, noted the woman. Following a visit to Kingston, to see an alien family member last week, a close relative fell seriously ill. So they traveling back and forth, and it's me one financially right now. It's really difficult. Sometimes I can't even find bus fare. Missing the close relationship she shared with her mother and the sisters, she said, the bond that we used to have, me and my two sisters, it is not there anymore. We used to spend a lot of time together, but because of the distance, when I come home, I'm just so tired. Plus, I have so much to do in the little time I get off. Other officers shared that they have had to travel from western Jamaica to as far as Portland and St. Thomas to visit relatives. It is like we live in two lives, noted a male constable, explaining that in addition to paying bills back home, officers have to find money for toiletries, refreshments, and sometimes dinner when the food provided by the police high command is not to their liking. The young members of the JCF deployed to the areas 
on the zones of special operations and the states of emergency also said that they have not gotten the promised 1,500 daily stipend for their efforts with no word from their superiors. Last month, it was revealed in Parliament that almost 70% of the estimated $505 million budgeted to maintain states of emergency during fiscal year 2019-2020 has already been spent on meals and hotel accommodation. 200 pounds of ganja seized in St. Elizabeth. The Marine and Narcotics Police have intensified the investigation into the seizure of over 200 pounds of ganja in Nain, St. Elizabeth, on Saturday. Police reports indicated that between the hours of 3.30 a.m. and 9 p.m., lawmen conducted an operation in the area where several packages containing over 200 pounds of ganja were seized. The estimated street value for the drug has not yet been ascertained. No one was arrested in connection with the seizure. Illegal alien American found with ammo in Kingston. A foreign national was arrested and charged for illegal possession of ammunition and the breaches of the Alien Act during an operation on Dumfries Street, Kingston 14 on Saturday, February 22. He is 24-year-old Dondre Sinclair of Queens, New York, United States of America and Dumfries Street, Kingston 14. Police reports are that about 5.15 p.m., lawmen conducted an operation at a premises occupied by Sinclair when three 9mm rounds of ammunition were found in his possession. Subsequent to his arrest, information revealed that Sinclair was illegally on the island. He is scheduled to appear before the court at a later date. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share. Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.